Hey, my name is Leander Jehl from the University of Stavanger, Norway, and I will talk about our work on the verification of hot stuff and consensus in the tree model. If you do get a déjà vu now, that is a good thing. It probably means you did see my talk at Forte. In this talk, I present additional details and report on ongoing work. Hotstuff is the consensus algorithm used in the Libra or DM blockchain. It is leader-based, has a linear communication complexity and an efficient leader change mechanism. And most important for this talk, Hotstuff uses a novel model that we call the tree model. In this talk, I will first give a short introduction to distributed consensus. I was not sure if that is necessary in this workshop, but since this is the first talk, I thought it might be okay. Then I will introduce the tree model. I will present simplified hot stuff, which is the protocol we verified. I will show how simplified hot stuff differs from the original hot stuff protocol and why it is easier to verify. Finally, I will quickly talk about other algorithms in the tree model, especially Raft. In distributed consensus, there's a set of end processes here shown as different hats. The processes maintain a shared log and some of the processes may fail. In leader-based consensus, one of the processes is assigned as leader. The leader can propose new entries to the log. The new entries must then be confirmed by two thirds, by typically two thirds of the processes. This may take one or more rounds of communication. Finally, the entry is considered committed and can be added to the log. If the leader fails, a new leader is assigned that may propose new entries. The problem in leader-based consensus is to ensure that the old and new leader do not commit different entries at the same index. In the tree model, there's a sequence of rounds or views, and typically each round has a leader. Initially, the tree consists of a root or genesis block in round zero. The leader of a round can propose a value by adding a new node or block. The new block contains a reference to an existing block as its parent. Multiple blocks can be added by one or more leaders and these blocks create a tree structure. When a block is committed, the branch leading up to that block is added to the lock or the blockchain. In the figure to the right, block C is committed and the branch of root A and C is added to the lock. If another block is committed, the lock is extended. In the figure, block E is committed and the lock is extended by blocks D and E. So in this model, it is important that all the committed blocks lie on the same branch. In the figure, if block B would be committed, it would result in inconsistencies in the lock. So the property that any two committed blocks lie on the same branch is the main safety property in the tree model. So how does simplified hot stuff work? We assume a set of processes, which is here shown as different hats. Each process has a local copy of the tree. The algorithm proceeds in the following steps. First, the leader adds a new block and sends that to the followers. Then the followers validate the new block and add it to their tree if everything is okay. The followers then evaluate some rules and decide whether they should vote for the new block by signing it. Finally, the processes check their tree for committed blocks. So how does a leader add a new block? A new block must have a round larger than its parent and it must contain signatures or votes for the parent for more than two thirds of the processes. Typically, a leader will try to extend the block in the highest round. In this figure, that is block C. Here we see that the leader added a new block D in round four with three signatures for block C. Obviously, leaders must collect signatures before they can publish such a block, but they can always extend the root block. When the followers receive the new block, they check if it was created correctly and add it to their tree. 
the followers then decide if they should sign the new block. Only if followers sign the new block can it be used as parent for another block. The followers only sign blocks in the correct round. This means after signing in round 5 they will no longer sign in round 4 and unless, unless a lot of time has passed they will not sign in round 1005 directly after signing in round 5. Additionally there's this second rule here which says to only sign a new block if its parent has a round larger or equal to the round a process has locked. Let's look at that rule in more detail. The figure here shows the tree at one process. This process has the lock at B. So the round of the lock is 2. Here we see that the rule allows our process to sign F1 and F2 but not F3. The parent of F1 block E has round 5 which is larger than 2. The parent of F2 C has round 3 which is larger than 2. So both of these can be signed but F3 has parent A in round 1 so F3 cannot be signed. The goal of this rule is to allow the system to arrive in a state where only blocks like F1 that are descendants of the locked block can be signed and then the locked block can be committed. After signing a new block our process needs to update its lock to the grandparent of the new block. However, only if the new lock has a higher round than the old one. For example, assume the process signed F2 as shown in the figure. The grandparent of F2 is A and has a smaller round than B, so the lock is not updated. Now assume our process signed F1. The grandparent of F1 is D. D has a higher round than our current lock, so the lock is updated. So as the last step, processes check for committed blocks. A block B is committed if it has a great grandchild in the next three rounds. In the figure, block B has a child D, a grandchild E, and a great-grandchild F. The round of F is 5, which is the round of B plus 3. Thus, in this tree, B is committed. Here is another tree, or another figure. Uh, in the lower tree, F is also a great-grandchild of B, but the round of F is 6, so here B is not committed. So to summarize the protocol, let's pray play through an example. Here the leader proposed block C in round 3. The followers sign it and the leader can propose a new block D in round 4. The followers sign it again and the leader can propose a new block. The followers sign it and the leader can propose a new block. Now the block F commits block C and uh, when block C is committed the whole branch up to C is committed so also block A is committed. So what about original hot stuff? Well the original hot stuff has a slightly different tree structure. In simplified hot stuff blocks contain signatures for their parents. In original hot stuff blocks have a parent but they contain signatures for some ancestor. So in the lower tree the block D contains a signature for block A or actually multiple signatures. These signatures or certificates add additional links to the tree. The main difference is that hot stuff uses a different rule for signing. Remember that simplified hot stuff uses the upper rule right here, which compares the round of the parent of the new block with the round of the lock. The original rule also compares the round of the lock to the round of the block 
that is certified by the new block. However, additionally, for the original rule, a process has to check if the locked block is an ancestor of the new block. This can be done by following the parent pointers. However, we found that especially this made the original version more complex to model and verify. So original hot stuff and simplified hot stuff are not equivalent. However, for a block to be committed in original hot stuff requires that the successors to that block contain signatures for their parent. And in exactly that situation, where blocks contain signatures for their parents, original hot stuff is equivalent to simplified hot stuff. We modeled simplified hot stuff in Ivy and the TLA proof system. We verified safety, especially that any two committed blocks lie on the same branch. In Ivy, the main tactic is to model the protocol and an inductive invariant in a decidable fragment of first order logic, namely the finite almost uninterpreted fragment. Typically, formulas with quantifier alternations lie outside the fragment. Our main problem was modeling the tree structure. Especially, we could not require that every block actually had a parent. We solved this by adding additional predicates to our model. For example, adding the parent at predicate that connects a block to the round of its parent, we could require that, every, that for every block B, there exists a round R such that parent at holds for B and R. This lies within the fragment because blocks and rounds are different sorts. In the proof, combining several such predicates allowed us to write an inductive invariant that was in the fragment. Please see the Forte paper for details. While the approach of added relations is described in previous work, we found its application to the tree model challenging. In original hot stuff, this problem arises both for the parents and for the certificate links. In the TLA proof system, we created an interactive proof for a TLA specification of the model. Our main problem was the ancestor relation. This relation is the transitive closure of the parent relation. While it was possible to define in TLA, we found it difficult to work with the definition. Here, simplified hot stuff was easier to work with than original hot stuff. In simplified hot stuff, we used the ancestor relation only in the safety property we proved. In original hot stuff, the ancestor relation appears both in the model and the inductive invariant. So to summarize, we proved safety of simplified hot stuff in Ivy and the TLA proof system. We had some difficulties, mainly from modeling the tree structure and the ancestor relation. There is more information about the proof and models in the photo paper. However, to formalize the relation between original and simplified hot stuff is still a to-do. Working with hot stuff, we were wondering if the tree model has a general advantage. One advantage I see is that it is similar to Nakamoto style consensus. For example, in Bitcoin with proof of work consensus, processes also add blocks to a tree and select one branch. I also believe that at least simplified hot stuff is easier to understand than other BFT algorithms. I have been teaching hot stuff to my students in a course on blockchain technology and find that they understand it quite well. So I was wondering if there are other algorithms in the tree model. There exists a recent proposal of fast hot stuff, but more interesting, the raft algorithm can be cast in this model. Raft is a consensus algorithm popular in the industry. It was presented in 2014 as an understandable consensus algorithm. Different from hot stuff, Raft assumes that processes can only fail by crashing and will not misbehave or attack the system. Raft operates in what we call the instance view model. Thus, values are proposed and committed with a tuple of instance and view number. These are also called index and term in Raft. In the figure, you see a matrix of slots each having an in instance and a view. Some slots have proposed and committed values, 
let's assume that the gray values are only proposed and the colored ones are both proposed and committed. Different from, from algorithms like Paxos, Raft commits values with a unique slot, so with a unique tuple of view and instance. In the figure here, you see that value B is committed both in slot 2, 1 and 2, 2. Such behavior is possible in algorithms like Paxos, but not possible in Raft. Since the view instance tuples are unique, we can transfer Raft to the tree model. To do this, we sum up the view and the instance to become the round. Please excuse, uh, the figure is slightly wrong. In the figure, it's actually the view plus the instance minus one, since the views here start with the one and not with the zero. In a recent work, Heidi Howard has identified the main differentiating properties and advantages of Raft over Paxos. The main properties are that values are committed with a unique view instance tuple and that in Raft, the most up-to-date process becomes the leader. These properties give the advantages of better understandability and efficient leader change. Interestingly, these properties are exactly the properties that make Raft suitable for the tree model. Remember also that efficient leader change was also one of the selling points for hot stuff. So to conclude, I want to conjecture that the tree model allows to design algorithms with efficient leader change that are easy to understand. While I do not think that we absolutely need more consensus algorithms, I want to encourage you to consider the tree model if you find yourself designing a new consensus algorithm. Thank you for this and uh, I will be happy to take your questions.